Okay, thank you. Half a day and good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. The Committee on Education and Infrastructural Advancement, Border Protection, Maritime Transportation, Guahan Preservation, Self-Determination, and Federal and Foreign Relations will now convene this roundtable hearing. Today is Tuesday, August 17, and it is 1719 hours. For the record and in accordance with the open government law, public notices were sent out via email to all senators, stakeholders, and all main media broadcasting outlets on Tuesday, August 10, 2021, and the second notice on Friday, August 13, 2021. Notice of today's hearing was also available on the Guam Legislature's website. I'd like to thank the Director of Department of Public Works for joining us today, and we also have some stakeholders from the cycling community. Thank you everyone for being here. With the, uh, before we begin, I've called this roundtable hearing to, dis Guam, to discuss Guam's bicycle safety lane infrastructure. The establishment of bicycle lane infrastructure began with the passing of Public Law 29-98, which mandates that bicycle lanes shall be part and parcel of the planning, development, plans, and programs of primary and secondary roads on Guam. With the passing of this public law, the Guam Department of Public Works 2030 Guam Transportation Program includes plans and improvements to the island's bicycle infrastructure. Public Law 31-189 further lays down groundwork by establishing the Bicycle Safety Act of 2012. This provides definitions of traffic laws and safety rules and re regulations for riding bicycles on our island. And so today, you know, uh, we, we saw that there is a need in the community to address uh, the critical impacts of bike lane infrastructures on our roadways. Uh, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen an increase of, in uh, cyclists. And uh, there has also been a increase in um, accidents involving cyclists and motorists on the roadways. And so I asked the director and members of our community to come out and perhaps uh, start a foundational meeting to discuss within the public uh, to how we can improve and how we can address some of the challenges we see today on our roadways. And so I'll just hand it off to the director. And if you could uh, please uh, identify the members of your team first. And then also I'd like to thank uh, Eric uh, Tidinko, who's the GCF president, and Paige, from, who's also a stakeholder in the cycling community. Okay, Paige, Paige, what is your last name? Butler. Butler. Butler, okay, so Paige Butler, thank you for being here. And then just go ahead and press the button so you can be heard. Okay, thank you. Director? Okay, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Again, for the record, my name is, it should be on, okay, here we go. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. For the record, my name is Vince Ariola. I'm the uh, director at the Department of Public Works. Uh, with me uh, today are two individuals that work with our federal highway program. Uh, Ms. Christina Ingverson, she's the uh, program manager uh, for, for Parsons uh, Inc. And uh, to my right is uh, Lyndon Kobayashi. He's with uh, WSB, a sub to Parsons, but also our, our acting chief engineer at, at DPW. Um, they are both heavily involved in, in our uh, Guam transportation plan, both the three-year and, and the, uh, the 2030 plan. Uh, they are both heavily involved and knowledgeable of all the Guam highway routes uh, to include Marine Drive, uh, Route 10, Route 8, Route 16, the, the, the major routes throughout the island, all the routed roads actually, uh, which the, the, the federal highway uh, program covers. Um, and they are also uh, quite knowledgeable with regard to the, um, the, the, the bike, bicycle um, statutes and, and propose bike lanes if, if we were to include those in, in, our, in our plans for, for future highways. Um, I know we, uh, at, at, the, at the onset, you wanted to talk a little bit about, about the bicycle safety laws. And, and one of the things I, I did want to bring up before we start getting into deeper conversation was that um, in, in uh, let's see, 27101, it, it does cite that every person riding a bicycle upon a roadway is granted all of the rights and is subject to all of the duties applicable to the driver of a vehicle by this chapter and the vehicle code of Guam. Um, you know, we talked, you talked earlier about bicycle education, uh, bike safety. This 
clearly needs to get out there. I, I, I'm aware of it, but I'll, I'll bet you 90% of the folks don't know it. Um, so that's, that's certainly one. And then the, the other one that I wanted to point out to, to you, Senator, was, was in section 27110, uh, subsection B, where it says, persons riding bicycle, bicycles upon a roadway shall not ride more than two abreast except on paths or parts of roadways set aside for the exclusive use of bicycles, so on and so forth. Um, and, you know, and, and when we did have a, a uh, when we sat down together about two weeks ago, we talked about bike lanes. Um, you know, one of the major disadvantages that, that I mentioned to you with regard to having bike lanes on, on our routed roads, uh, the first one, of course, was space. Uh, and I think we can all agree when it comes to Marine Drive, uh, basically the, all the sidewalk areas, so you're talking from like Kaiser Derrido to Adeloup, whatever sidewalk there, that's the extent of the government of Guam property. That's, that's all we have, that's all we're gonna get. Uh, I think with the other routed roads, uh, like I said, as, I was, I have, as I've been driving around, you know, you have Route 10, you have Route 8, you have portions of Route 16 that still have some, some semblance of shoulders that, that we can work on. Uh, and, uh, and use as bike lanes. It just has to be paved and probably extended a little bit. And I mentioned to you one of our, our projects that is out for bid right now. I think it's closing, Route 5? Closing tomorrow? Uh, Route 5, that's from, um, that goes to the, the um, Naval Mag area. Uh, I, we've included in, in the design there and in the construction, it's not just a uh, paved road for, for uh, uh, vehicle traffic, uh, cars and trucks, but I think we've also included, I believe we included wider shoulders uh, for, for pedestrians, for runners, and, and for bicyclists in, in that area. So, you know, it, a lot of it is really, really dependent. There's two things, it's the land space, available land space, and money. Um, I, I think the good part about it, uh, and maybe uh, in, in, in the discussion, we can get a little bit clearer, but I, I have to imagine that the uh, construction or the paving of, of a bike lane isn't going to be as expensive as, say, uh, a, a vehicle lane or a truck lane. Uh, it just ha as, as I, was, I would have to understand, it just has to be, I th I th what was the, the number they gave me, five to six feet wide uh, at the most or at the least, and, and fairly level. And, and you know, it wouldn't even require three inches of, of asphalt. Uh, Lyndon's the engineer here, so you know, he could talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but I have to imagine it wouldn't be as expensive as, as, um, as paving a travel lane for, the, for the cars and trucks. However, uh, it's, it's, still, it's still some money to, to, to look at. Uh, and uh, road prep, of course, uh, we're gonna have to take care of that as well. And so, in, in our discussions, right, we're looking to possibly prioritize a portion of the road or a route of the roads, uh, primarily for the bikers, and also provide them specific times, you know, that, it, that would be safe and feasible for everyone in the community. Um, we've also, you know, earlier we were discussing about the possibility of, on the weekends, closing down a specific route like they do in some states, to allow bicyclists to move freely um, without having to worry about getting hit or run off the road. And so really, uh, the whole purpose, the premise of this round table is to really find solutions that we can constitute in a bill and continue this work group until you know, this bill is vetted with the public and, and becomes law. And so we, we'd like to also hear the input from the cycling community on some of the concerns that you have about the roadways on Guam and see if there are possible um, you know, resolves that we can put in place to, to ensure the safety of everyone. Oh. Yeah, my name is Eric Tidinko from the Guam Cycling Federation and uh, thank you, Speaker, and thank you, uh, Director Ariola, for the opportunity uh, it's the first time uh, that it's actually gotten to this level and I, and I really do appreciate the forum that you guys have given us. Um, it, it, one accident, one you know, motor vehicle hitting a cyclist is one too many already. And as you mentioned, 
with the onset of the pandemic, more and more people are starting to bike. They may not like running because it may not suit their knees or whatever, but you know, it may be too high impact. I can't, I can't even tell you, we've tripled the number of members in our cycling federation in that one year and it just continues to grow. So there's good and bad. Good in that there's more exposure, cyclists are out there, that hopefully that translates into more people being aware that, okay, you know, um, I, there is somebody that is cycling out there. Now there's, there's more people that have a possible connection to a cyclist. And I think that's what it is. There's a, there's a lack of empathy on, in, in motorists, most motorists. They don't know a cyclist, right? And so there's a dehumanization that comes, comes with it. And, and it's really sad because a lot of motorists who, and I've, I've experienced this, and I'm sure, you know, Christine has, because it, it is so blatant. We could be riding down on Marine Corps Drive at three lanes, empty, we're on the right-hand side, and somebody will intentionally just really try to get very close to us in an intimidating manner. And that's because they don't know who we are. They don't, they don't think of us as humans anymore. We're just somebody that's impeding in their, what they perceive as their right to be the only people on the road is vehicles. And we've seen it because I've seen it also, I've seen it manifested in articles and opinion pieces in the newspaper. And we've been very vocal about addressing that and, and these people that have made these, these statements that we don't belong on the, on the streets. Regardless of that, we know what the law is, as you said, Director, and it allows us to be basically treated as a motor vehicle. So the influx and the increase in the number of cyclists, good in that it allows for more exposure, but bad in that now there's more people out there. And if, there's, if there is a, an element of the uh, motorists that are out there that are still very angry, now they become more angry because now they see more people and they see an impediment to wherever they need to get to in whatever timely fashion that they think is, is, is you know, their right to do. And so it is becoming, um, I think, more critical for us to, to address this. And, and you know, in, the, in previous administrations, uh, Senator, I have brought this up and the, the the reasons that I was given for not being able to, to install a bike lane is that it's only for new, um, for new roads. Anything, that is, uh, uh, anything else that is done on Guam, is an, if it's just an improvement, it doesn't count for, for uh, the mandate or the, for um, including bike lanes, right? Am I, am I mistaken? Is that, what, is that what it is? Is that true? Given, given the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> given the limitations we have, like I mentioned, especially with respect to Marine Drive, that's all we have. Mm -hmm. That's you, we're, we're, we we can't dedicate a full bike lane uh, just just for bicyclists. The the, the traffic patterns and 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 the traffic numbers. Uh, or you just will not dictate something like that. Yeah, I'm not really referring to that. I'm referring to the fact that it is the rationalization that you can't add any bike lanes to, let's just say, uh, 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 something like... Um, route 8. Or yeah, Route 8 or... or south. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, because, because anything that would be... That those are existing roadways, so they don't fall under the mandate of... Uh, requiring a bike lane, right? Because it's an ex it's an improvement rather than a new construction or a new. Uh, and so and so that was the previous a, a previous administration had said that we can't do anything because we're really not we're we're really not constructing a new road, so we don't we're not obligated to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I almost felt uh, we we felt at least I did. I felt like okay, well that's there's nowhere to go from there, you know. I mean, but. I'm encouraged that, um, that this is taking place because then it, it, to me, shows that at least there's dialogue that can happen that can address this because, yeah, you're right. There's going to be more instances of these uh, uh, accidents, you know, and, and thank goodness we're, we're, you know, we don't have as many fatalities as some places that I've heard of. 
but it can happen. And so I'm looking at it from our standpoint of anything that's available out there, uh, Director Ariola, that can be done. Um, I, I would tell you right now that the most frequented areas are really marine, everybody. I mean, there's not a lot of places we can bike. So with Marine Drive, Marine Corps Drive, um, I would say the areas that would be most traveled are when people want to do long rides, they'll go to the south, and then they'll do, and, the, the, and then a higher concentration of riders are up north too as well, from Dedido. A lot of them start from Micronesia Mall too. There's some big groups that start there. Uh, and so some of those new areas, that, I mean, if it can be dedicated, then it's just, it's just a, a place to have a safe haven on the road. And anything is an improvement over nothing. And so whatever can be done, then that'll be fantastic for us. We, we appreciate it. And whatever we can do to help, we're, we're there. And then the second component of, of what I wanted to, to address is that, which you brought up, sir, is that there is an informational part of that that we can handle, which is to, to ourselves invest in, in some sort of campaign uh, of bicycle awareness. And as a, as a public service announcement, you know, we can undertake that as a federation. We have some funds and we can, go, we've already done that. We've created one before. Um, so we can go out and make others and hopefully with the, with the help of some of the media here, we can get the word out and it won't cost us anything with airtime. And so that part of it we can do. The other part, the construction of the actual um, um, bike lanes, that's something that, yes, it, it, we need help with and we need your support. And so um, we're discussing about also including in a provision uh, well, first, let me get a step back a little bit. Director, is this, does it state anywhere in statute that uh, negates us from adding bike lanes or trying to in, uh, include bike lanes in existing roadways? Is there anything in statute that says in, that? In, in future construction of like our, our routed roads? No. No. So it's just say that we're, we, have a, we have a road from Anderson down to Naval Gate, right? Big Navy. Is there anything in statute that says that DPW is not allowed to create a bike lane on that existing road? Oh, no. no okay. Not that. Because right. I didn't no. see that in the current no. law. So I'm thinking, no. is there anything federal that, yeah. that negates you from doing that? No. Okay. So this possibility that these things can be done. Right. You just right. have to find a way. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we were discussing also uh, possibilities of uh, prioritizing specific routes during certain times of the day. And so uh, really the, the biggest one we were thinking was from Anderson Gate mm -hmm. to Navy Gate mm -hmm. in the morning and on the weekends. Right. right. And so I remember several years back the Calvo Tenorio administration and I think you guys were painting the icons of the bike and the arrows and those are all gone now. And so we're trying to see how we can uh, again bring awareness that hey, yeah. this is a bike lane and that people who are cyclists do have the mm -hmm. right of way. Um, so what do, you, what do you recommend as far as prioritizing routes for the bikers and times of day and days well, of the week? Well, times of day, most of the cyclists are out in early in the morning, just like runners. I think we, we all want to be out of the heat before it gets too debilitating. Uh, so I would imagine anywhere from 5 a.m. up to like 8 or 9 a.m. Uh, is when you'll see uh, people out there biking. And so the early mornings, until, until like um, mid-mornings, um, usually on the weekends. And so that's a majority of the times you're gonna see people out there. Um, I mean, you do, you do see some, some cyclists out there who are using bikes as a form of commute, and that can be during some of the heaviest rush hour traffic. And I, I, that to me is very scary, I mean, because uh, we don't have dedicated bike lanes. And so to me, I, don't, I wouldn't do that myself. But I know that there are some people that still do try to get a workout in um, only because that's the only time that's available for them. So if we're going to prioritize, I would say the weekends um, between 5 a.m. and 8 or 9 a.m. would be ideal, I think. Hey, Christina, jump in here if you think, because I know you're a cyclist too. So um, what was that? There's also a group that likes to ride in the evenings, uh, Tuesday and Thursdays. Uh, when, once again, once the sun goes down, they're looking for the cooler temperatures. 
and the, so weekdays, you know, would apply as well in the, in the hours of like 6 I'm, I'm to sorry, 9. I'm sorry, Tuesdays to Thursday or Tuesday, Tuesday and Thursday? Tuesday and Thursday. And Thursday? Yeah, they're pretty regular at it. And it's a, it's a considerable sized group. You know, it's probably going to be anywhere from 10 to 30 riders that will huh. go out together. The, oh, it varies. A lot of times they'll start, let's say, like at Micronesia Mall, and they'll ride down Route 1 and come around and go back up um, through Route 16 back to the mall, or they may cut up through the airport road, that route in front of the airport, and then back down the hill to uh, the Micronesia Mall. But they're always looking for a variety. You, drive the, you ride the same path all the time, it gets boring. <laughs> yeah. So, so they're, they'll put out on their chat group, you know, we're going to be riding this direction this time. Some may partake, some may say, no, I don't want to go that route and won't go. But it's more regular that these guys are um, riding. And, and along with you know, some of the other things you guys are discussing here, you know, we need to keep in mind that there's you know, different styles of riders. The ones that me and Erica are mentioning right now are more like the elite type of riders that are gonna be riding a, what's called a road bike, specifically made for the road. To, um, and they're going fast. They're gonna be keeping up with the flow of traffic for the most part, because I've seen these guys get up to 43 miles an hour on flat ground, which they shouldn't be because they're speeding. <laughs> but anyway, so the, you know, they can go with the flow of traffic. And, and some of the guys in a different group, they're known to ride in a pack, where you were talking about, you know, you should be riding single file or side by side, you know, keeping yourself to the far right lane. But they're actually taking up the lane for safety. Because if there's a bulk of them, you know, then cars are going to see them easier and go around them. Versus if they're all in a line, then cars will try and intrude in the lane and get really close to them. So, that, so that's why you see them in a pack. It's not like they're trying to, you know, block traffic. It's a safety reason for them. I've noticed that too. Um, and it is the safety in numbers kind of um, mentality. And, um, and it, the, the theory, you know, I mean, it's I mean, the logic behind it. Yeah, as Paige mentioned is... Um, for, for if I'm a motorist, I actually prefer that because it's instead of a long line of cyclists that I have to, two each. To, yeah, two each. Let's just say there's you know, 30 riders and there are only two abreast following yeah. the law. Then it's a longer uh, pass to get around them. Where if it's a smaller, if, it's, if you get those 30 people and now they're all a little bit more bunched up, it's a much shorter um, length to pass them safely. And so I don't know if that can be modified in law, but uh, I, I, I definitely agree with Paige that a lot of those guys, that's, it's a safety, it's a safety uh, method for them when they're riding. Um, yeah. something, something to consider, right now, like I, like I just read, it is, it should be no more than two abreast. Two abreast, right. But if you get two abreast at 30. Yeah. Yeah, that's a long line. <laughs> you probably got, uh, that's 100 feet. If you get yeah. a pack, yeah. you're, you're like a tractor trailer. Right. Exactly. Maybe you take up that space in the right. lane and that's it. Yeah. So and that's then, something to consider. Thank you. So the other one I wanted to mention too is, okay, so that would be like your elite road bikers. And now we have also mm -hmm. your recreational riders. And we also have the uh, off-road mountain bike type of riders. And those people will ride more on the sidewalks for safety for one thing, because, and they can't ride that fast because they're recreational. They're going to be putting along maybe five, 10 miles an hour versus the road bike guys are going to be, you know, more or less being able to keep up with traffic. So I believe there is a law about, you know, uh, bicycles are not allowed on sidewalks. Yeah. But honestly, there's probably more bicycles that would ride on sidewalks than we have pedestrians. And I understand that's, you know, part of the, re the reason is, you know, the, it's a sidewalk, walk, meaning pedestrian, but you know, with bicyclists that are going at a slower pace and they uh, don't want to be on the road, they're going to prefer to be on the sidewalk, especially when you got kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm guilty of it myself. I'll go to Tumon with my you know, son since he was six years old, riding bicycles in Tumon, and I kept him on the sidewalk because there's no way I'd have him six years old riding on the street because the, the chances of an accident. Because I mean, it, it seems to happen more regular than we like of you know incidents between vehicles I think and bicycles. We're get there's, some... been, there's been three in the last three weeks yeah. that we know of. So that was something I wanted to bring up too is, you know, maybe an amendment on sidewalk usage, you know, because of some areas there's just, there's really not enough room to put a, a bike lane on a road anyway, but yeah. there is a sidewalk there. And Marine Drive is one of them. You won't get the road bikes on the sidewalks though, because it's too rough. 
You know, they, they need a, you know, a fairly smooth surface to ride on, but recreational riders, people that are on, you know, a mountain bikes type of bike, you know, they can go over rough terrain and be comfortable with it. I don't think, Director, I don't think you're going to get away from the fact that most of the riders, wherever they start, they're going to have to have, they're going to be on Route 1 at some point because it's the biggest road that we have. Now, I feel fairly safe on that road myself because there's three lanes going in each direction from down to, from Adeloupe all the way up to, um, gosh, just past Micronesia Mall. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel relatively safe there. Um, not to say that it hasn't happened where I've had, you know, irate motorists, but um, if we're going to prioritize any sort of bike lanes, it needs to be in an area where there's only less than three lanes, two lanes or one lane in each direction if there is, if there is, um, if there is room on the side, you know, for a shoulder. Um, that would definitely help. I know that a lot of people do their, their, they ride down to the south, for one, because there's less traffic. Um, but, you know, you, once you get down there, you know, if, if for the most part, the, the people in the south are pretty cool. You know, and, and maybe because it's just a different lifestyle for them, you know, but we, I, don't get, I don't see an aggressiveness down there. It's Route 1, even though they have three lanes in each direction, it's Route 1 where I feel that there's a lot of aggression on uh, drivers. The, the, you know, the lanes that people fly on, you know, Route 16, um, those are the, the ones that where you'll see probably a majority of people just flying by on their cars and so. Yeah, ra yeah. Route 4 as well. What was that? Route 4, Shalampago and, and yes. Joinia. It's, mm -hmm. it's also an area of yes. fast drivers and not yes. necessarily paying attention to the cyclists. Right. And I live in, off of Route 4. I live in Shalampago, so I, I, I see it. And um, you're right. I, and I don't know how much shoulders left on that, on that route up there, but uh, that definitely could be something. Uh, you know, that's, that's a main artery for a lot of the cyclists when they're doing their... When their routes, yeah, when they're going on their, some of their routes, so. Uh, in Joinia, there is, yeah. So it's, the top. Top. it's at the top. Uh, on the top. There you go. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll pull it towards you. Toward you. Lyndon Kobayashi, um, WSP here for DPW and also the acting chief engineer for DPW. So um, DPW actually does have a number of projects where we, um, we, 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 did we do accommodate um, bike lanes, whether it's dedicated, also shared use. So the typical standard or the minimal, it all depends on the available real estate, you know, co cost and balancing the overall needs of the project, you know. Um, but we have, we have several projects that are funded for construction, um, um, hopefully this year, um, that, that do have um, accommodations for bicyclists. So um, those are the Route 14 resurfacing project. That project, we're actually going to be doing what you call a road diet. And what that does is it repurposes the road for alternative modes of transportation, whether it be bicyclists, p uh, pedestrian, so that would have dedicated bike lanes on Route 14, and that's, that's out to bid. Um, Where's Route 14? Uh, Chalan San Antonio. GPO. Okay. GPO area. Um, and then, you know, um, also uh, Route 14B, um, that, that project, um, that, that we're planning on putting that out this year as well. That has the, the shared use, 14-foot outside lanes. Great. Um, um, granted, these aren't long tracks, but, you know, based on budget, right, we, it's all we can really afford. Um, um, and also, like 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 director said, um, Route Five, um, which is that's a little longer of a project because it's it's a narrower roadway. Um, so you know, anytime we, we we plan and scope a project, just like the law, we always accommodate. Anytime we're doing a reconstruction or widening, uh, we always we always look at accommodating uh, bicyclist needs, whether it be the 14 foot lane, the four foot or wider if possible on um, bike lanes. Um, we always do look at when we scope the project out based on what available budget there is, whether we can afford it. Um, I think, I think the question earlier about, um, you know, if it's an existing road, I think that's more towards like, if it's like a, a rehabilitation or a, a mill and overlay, you know, where we were not planning on widening, we didn't really budget time-wise or cost-wise to afford widening or, or acquisition of right-of-way if needed. Um, those are typically projects where, you know, it's, it's more routine type maintenance work where we, where we typically wouldn't consider that. But things like Cheryl's, you know, and stuff like that, where you're not widening the footprint, but you're still, you know, adding awareness and markings, I think that's, that, those are things that could be done. Sorry. Uh, I, uh, sorry. 
what you were pointing out too about the bike lane um, putting in areas. I believe on Route 1 where it intersects with, uh, I believe it's Route 3 by GRMC, the new, there is actually a painted bike lane there. So I guess when that design was made, you know, there was a space allocated to add, you know, a small little bit of a bike lane there That's as right. well. This one is the uh, one that goes by GRMC. We yeah. bought in that one a couple of years ago. On yeah. Route 1. Yes, we, and did, then, we, did, we did accommodate that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on Route 3, where they have the construction going on um, by the new marine base, they got that nice paved like sidewalk, walking area, running area, yeah. which is also shared by uh, bicycles. And, and that, that's great yeah. to have that there as well. That, so, that one has the 14-foot the, the outside lane, and it has the 4-foot shoulder, yeah. and it has the, the pedestrian path. So it has all, all yeah. three of those. Yeah. And I, I think a, a part of, of, of one of the reasons for that was the um, we knew that going in with Route 3, once once re, Route 3 was reconstructed, we knew that tr whenever you have a new paved road, your, your speeds are going to go up. Yeah. That's just, that's a fact of life. Uh, we've got some of the, the GPD officers working, they're catching folks doing 70 wow. on Route 3. Wow. And, and they knew it because it's, it's so wide and yeah. it's just, it, it looks so safe to drive on, yeah. right? So folks are gonna, they're, they're gonna up their speed limits. And so because of that, even though we haven't touched the speed limit there, they, they, they actually, we actually put in dedicated bike lanes yeah. uh, because we knew that, you know, there's no way they're gonna have to, they're gonna share that last lane with the, with the traffic. Uh, so there's, you know, there's dedicated bike lanes. But, you know, I, I think so, several of the things we really have to keep in mind is, is uh, number one is, is, is human driver and rider safety mm -hmm. that's that that's paramount that that's got to that's got to oversee all our decisions here as as we move forward um and then uh and then following the the, the safety issues you, you know it's going to take communication uh it's going to take outreach um uh it it's it's going to take driver education as well as rider education because there's got to be given both sides right you know we got to protect the bicycle riders and also the the, the car drivers you know, we don't want you know, some, some, a, a bicyclist to not stay in their lane and then someone's got to veer off and then you, 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 it's vehicle to vehicle as, as opposed to a bicycle to vehicle or vehicle to bicycle. So there's a lot of those factors yeah. that, that, mm -hmm. that are in there. And, and if we are going to escalate this to, to more bike lanes and, of course, more bicyclists, you know, we, we'll, we'll certainly get our Office of Highway Safety involved. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're run by a federal grant and... and Right now, as I mentioned earlier, they do 99% uh, vehicle mm -hmm. safety. Yeah, you know, t click it or ticket, mm -hmm. seat belts, things like that, yeah. you know. Uh, but we certainly can get them involved as a matter of I forgot to bring it again, Madam Chair, but I'll, I'll, I'll send that to your office. Um, it, it talked about nationally what, what states uh, do with regard to bike lanes. Uh, some, uh, there's, there's quite a few that, that have some mandated Quite a few that don't, yeah, just depending on the state. So. Director, I would like to also point out that if you are behind a cyclist and they're on the right lane and you do see them kind of moving around, it's because they're trying to avoid any sort of uh, deviations from this okay. movement. I mean, it, it or a, a grate, a grate, yeah, a grate or yeah. the, the <laughs> manhole covers that have depressed. <laughs> Real um, catcher. Yeah, yeah the, the, a lot of the manhole covers that are depressed already, mm -hmm. they, they are just basically yeah. trying to do that. If it's smooth, they're going to hold that line. Yeah, There's no yeah. reason to deviate from that. But yeah. uh, that would be probably the only reason I would think. Uh, but yes, you're right. Um, you know, we, we need to do our part, mm -hmm. absolutely, in, uh, in, in outreach. And so I, I know that even in just our, before this meeting, in our, in our own chat discussion, we, we mentioned that we have to do that. That's something that we have to take on as, our, as an expense for ourselves. Yeah. One of the things, Madam Chair, you, we, we may want to consider, uh, and again, is, is when, when, uh, when an individual is passing the bicyclist, uh, I, I have to imagine they, they kind of come out, they pass, and then they'll come in as soon as they, as, as soon as, as, as they can. Um, I don't know if we, we should define how they should pass. Yeah, they should. Uh, you know, there should be, I, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50 feet of clearance before yeah. they can go back in the lane. The same uh, as a vehicle. Yeah. So, you know, I, again, a lot of it is communication, a lot of it is, is education, mm -hmm. um, awareness, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. we, we can, uh, 
I, I, I'm almost positive our Office of Highway Safety can, can, can help out in that regard. Madam Speaker, I'll send you uh, to your office uh, one of the videos that was produced by the Cycling Federation that kind of touches on all of these, which is, you know, um, what's a safe way to pass a cyclist, um, things like that. Um, and, and, and we'll rerun it again. We'll, we'll send it off to the media again. Uh, last, I think the last thing we did with it was we just did it, uh, we were just pushing it via social media, but we'll engage with the media companies to kind of do that again. Okay, thank you. You know, um, I think this is a good basis that we can start off, but the, the challenge that we have here is not just about uh, cyclists outreach or education on road safety, right? The challenge is that the government is not providing the roads available to ensure that everyone in the community that uses the roads are, are, are safe, right? Mm -hmm. And um, like, like you said, just in a matter of week, you know, there were three accidents. And so this is, this is the challenge that we have faced before us is how are we going to, if we cannot expand the roadways, how, you know, are we going to include a painted bike lane and how will we regulate that with statute? And so as we move forward, perhaps within the next week, you know, I'd like to see if we can have something concrete where there are areas that we identify the roads um, that we can utilize and where we're actually going to, um, if we have to paint uh, bike lanes on the roads and I, I understand that in some cases the challenge is that the roads are too narrow, but uh, we have the, there's a strip of five lanes over here. I'm sure that there's some way that we can accommodate a bike lane on both sides uh, for the bicyclists in those areas where the roads are really expanded. And so um, we're, there's uh, the infrastructure bill coming in, the, the money from the infrastructure. Uh, from the federal government, and then we also have an additional, the ARP, which is already in, and the legislature requested $30 million to DPW for, this, for these types of purposes, right? And so even if, even at that, if we can start doing something now, because it's getting too risky on the roads, especially with the, um, the changes in the weather, um, we don't need to see another traffic fatality because we don't have the roads properly labeled out. And so that is the challenge before mm -hmm. us, right? That the government owes the people. Um, that is our onus as a, as a government body. And so uh, we're going to continue to work towards this director. Mm -hmm. And then perhaps in our next meeting, we can have the presentation of the routes. And uh, I will also have a presentation of a bill in draft form and then see where we can move from there. But uh, we will need the expertise of your team to, to see what is feasible before we move forward. So if we can work together on that, that, that would really bring us a long way. We also, we also have, Madam Chair, we also have uh, information on traffic accident data, uh, and where they're located, high traffic, uh, traffic accident areas. Um, don't we have, a, a, we have our traffic engineer coming, when, when's it gonna be coming? Shortly, right? Sep September. Yeah. September, it'd be, it, uh, he's a, yeah. a wonderful, and he knows Guam roads probably better than I do. Yeah. Uh, okay. He's he's very familiar with all the the, 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 the traffic patterns, uh, the safety issues that are that are out there. He's he's a uh, he's a uh, he's a wonderful individual to, to uh, converse with, and get some ideas on on how to assist uh, with our, our this proposal here. Right. I'm just hoping that tomorrow I can see um, a bike lane from Anderson to Big Navy, and this is his bike lane. And then we start to make our way towards the south. That's what I'm hoping. I'll be competing, I'll be competing with Selva Balta because that's, that's, that's exactly his route that he wants. Okay. He wants a straight route. Uh, I'd like to uh, interject also with, um, as I mentioned before, the other type of cyclists out there. Uh, there's the mountain bike community, which right. you know, is pretty large on Guam. And we have some places to, you know, enjoy the mountain bike, you know, being Leo Palace there the uh, up there at... Yeah. Uh, PDA, the Two Lovers Point area. Yes. Uh, we utilize the uh, Guam Racing Federation's uh, Jigo Raceway Park. We have uh, trails that we've made up there. Um, but I was also going to, you know, inform you folks that there's an industry for tourism and mountain biking because you know people in their local area they kind of get tired of riding their own trails and they do like to travel. And there's been cities in the states that they've invested a large amount of money into building these mountain bike trails and have brought 
just huge amounts of money and tourism into these areas. And being that, you know, where we're centrally located right now, we could draw tourists in from our region, you know, from the Philippines, Taiwan, Korea, Australia. You know, these people will travel if we have decent trails to ride on. And this would also help eliminate some of your road uh, traffic for bicyclists. Because, you know, you do have these guys that are riding, you know, a mountain bike type of bike on the road, and they would really appreciate to have another place to ride. Mm -hmm. So, and the problem we have at Leo is, you know, we're, we're kind of competing for space with the four wheelers up there, mm -hmm. as well as the weather. I mean, that the type of mud that's up at um, Leo, the dirt, once it gets wet, it, it's not really rideable for a bicycle. So we're left with uh, the Two Lovers Point area, which we're limited there because a lot of it's private property. So we, we're trying to ride, you know, in space that we can or we have permission from the uh, landowners mm -hmm. to be able to go through their property and ride on. And then, of course, with uh, the uh, Jigo Park, it's a limited amount of space as well. I mean, we only have, what, it's 2.9 or around three miles of trail that we've been able to accumulate up there. So if we could, you know, look at something maybe with some uh, infrastructure money to invest into a, a trail system through Guam in some place, you know, whether it be, you know, you know, some of the public land that's available, it doesn't need much space. You only need like a three or four foot wide path to go through. Okay. But it might be something you want to Google, you know, for more information if you're interested in, in seeing more about that. You know, look what Bentonville, Arkansas did. Walmart invested like $10 million into their city to build these, you know, fairly extravagant trails throughout the city. And, and it's drawn in uh, just a lot of tourists into that area to just to ride bicycles around the town. Okay. Thank, thank you for that. Thank you for that input. So... I guess the next question would be, when would be a, a feasible amount of time for DPW to present the plan or a plan on how they see the roadways going moving forward? Um, you know, I, I'd like to sit down with our team, uh, especially our highway uh, office staff, and, and look at some of the, uh, the information, the stats. Uh, I used to work here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, please allow me to sit down with our team and our Office of Highway Safety uh, and, and just, just look at the numbers and, and where we're at with, with traffic accidents, uh, high, high risk areas. Uh, Linden and company, uh, we've, we've got some semblance of, 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 of the mapped out routes, uh, but I like to fine tune it to see exactly w whether there's real shoulders involved or no shoulders involved, like what, what lanes we would have to definitely, definitely designate if we were going to go through, through uh, uh, Marine Drive. And then also if we're going to do that, what hours would be the most advantageous? Um, you know, clearly a, a weekday, even at, at 6.30, 6 o'clock, weekdays on Marine Drive, you, it, it's pretty packed. Weekends, I've seen for myself, weekdays, Marine Drive, weekends uh, on Marine Drive are are pretty pretty empty. It, it's the traffic's really low, um, and that's all the way up to like 7 a.m. So you know there's 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 a nice open window, and as Eric was saying, it's still cool, because I think once you get to 8 o'clock, you better be in shape or turn around. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay. okay, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Director, and thank you, everyone, for coming. We are going to postpone uh, for further discussion, and we are going to meet back here next week, Thursday, uh, to, have, to discuss the, the statistics around developing the bike lane infrastructure and how we can move forward with different types of courses of actions. Okay, very good. I'm glad we're making some traction here. So we will postpone till next week, Thursday at 5.30 is better for you. Okay, 5.30, thank you very much. It is now six o'clock in the evening and this roundtable hearing is adjourned until Thursday, is in recess until Thursday, Thursday next week at 5.30. Thank you, PM. Thank you.